Today's video is sponsored by Native Sons Goods, makers of the highest quality woven guitar, bag, and camera straps you'll ever see. Native Sons straps are handmade one at a time in the USA with unparalleled love and care. Click the link in the description to check out their new expanded lineup featuring all new 3-inch guitar straps. And remember, when you support my sponsor, you support this channel, and I sure appreciate it. Hey, how's it going everybody? Brad the Guitarist here, and this is going to be a part two to the video I did uh, on going into my secret guitar closet. I sold quite a few things. I actually got the last of that stuff um, that I sold in the other video shipped out today, and sorry it took so long. I actually ran out of boxes and packing materials. I did not have quite enough uh, for everything that I sold, so I guess that's a good problem to have, but it did take me a while to get some of that last stuff out, so sorry about that if you guys ordered something. It took a little while longer than I anticipated, but uh, that's just the, kind of the way it ended up, but anyway, um, I did thin some things out. As you can see, the uh, Tysco that was here is gone. Uh, had that Green Burst guitar sell. Had another one that was right there, I think it's gone, and it, uh, I don't know what it was, but I guess you could look back at the other video and see what sold. Also inside the closet, it's a little bit thinned out, I've got gotten rid of a few things here. You can see, instead of a full line of stuff, we're missing a lot of spaces. And I think where I left off was, uh, this is about the last thing in here that I got to, and everything from here back, which includes all of these. And back into there, and actually back into there as well. And I'm, I wish I had a uh, light on this; you would actually be able to see a little better. But it goes way down in, uh, way down in there. There's some stuff uh, on the bottom. So I'm going to try to get through as much of this stuff as I can this time around, and we'll just see uh, see what all we pull out of here, man. Okay, so I'm going to switch to uh, my iPhone here for this footage, and we'll try to get some close-ups of some of this stuff. Now, this first thing here, this is a shell of a, a body. Um, and if I refer to a guitar as just a husk, this is what I'm talking about. This thing is uh, pretty much just a husk. I mean, I've got a little bit of hardware there. I've got a strap button and just the single strap button. Got those pickup surrounds right there. The neck is, I think the neck is okay on this. Um, good piece of rosewood. Let me see if it's straight. Doesn't appear to be too bad, but it is. Well, no, it is. See, look at that. You're gonna have to re-glue the fretboard down. And it could be that this this is warped back here. I don't. I just. I don't know. Um, just siding down the fretboard, it looks like you might be able to glue this back and have a working uh, neck. Now the body is going to take a lot more work, obviously. This thing has been exposed to some elements. As you can see, it's got real severe checking. And that actually is going into the wood. That's actually wood cracking. It looks, I guess it looks pretty, uh, looks kind of cool in one way, but... It's, this is not something that I would probably consider restoring. Probably what I would do is uh, strip this thing of parts. I've got a you know a couple little spacers right there or ferrules, whatever you want to call them, grommets. I would probably strip those out, uh, take those pickup surrounds off of there, uh, use the bolts that are bolting the neck and the uh, neck plate itself. Those are kind of hard to find when you need a neck plate that's the right size. Got a couple of little bits of hardware back here, but nothing really major. Um, like I said, the neck might be salvageable. I just, I just really don't know. And the body itself might be salvageable as well, and might, you know, look cool if somebody's going for that sort of look. But, you know, it is what it is. That's uh, in a very severe state, and I probably, um, you know, I could probably let that go really cheap. It just, it's got a couple of bits of hardware on there though that. If I had to replace them, you know, it would cost me a fair bit of money, like that neck plate, for instance. It's weird, uh, you know, you, you look at something like that and say it's total garbage. Like, a lot of people did respond, like, oh, you're just pulling out a bunch of firewood. Well, you could say that, but uh, if you had to go replace any of the parts, um, particularly the hardware, like I said, on any of this stuff, it would cost you a lot on eBay. Like this uh, tailpiece on this one, you know, that's about the only redeeming feature that I could see on this particular Guitar. This is a tulip guitar. It was a two pickup. 
and you know there's no logo so that's kind of a high dollar part the logo is, is missing uh, you've got the string retainer missing all of the tuners missing all of the associated parts with that you've got the nut missing so there's not really much to this one you've got maybe a you got a little string button or a, a strap button excuse me there but otherwise it's just a body so there's a couple of husks right there uh, this one you know if you had to buy all the parts for it and everything it would turn out looking something like this one right here which I got at a Goodwill the other day for 25 bucks which I thought was a pretty decent deal but this is this is this will give you an idea of what all is missing uh, off of that one there because that would have been the same model the two pickup version so you know you'd have to get everything really and this one is a this is a hardtail piece instead of the uh, the trim but it's not every day anymore you know you might think oh that's just a piece of crap guitar that that you should be able to see at any goodwill or any uh you know thrift store or whatever i am missing a one tuner right there um but that isn't the case at all not anymore at least you don't see you don't see these anymore you used to see them a lot you know um thrift stores flea markets things like that it would be covered up with these but they have all kind of disappeared it seems from the market probably into everybody's collections everybody's kind of sitting on them now or they've parted them out i think a lot of people have parted these out now and uh you know there's been a steady stream of parts for a long time on ebay from stuff like this and that also is starting to dry up it seems uh so you know i think all that all this stuff is starting to sort of disappear into everybody's collections i mean you can still find parts but um they're not nearly as prevalent as they once were even so um anyway but there's the first three guitars i might as well go ahead and show you what's over here now that i've kind of uh shown it halfway anyway and this first guitar right here is a kent americana and it's made by guy tone uh probably long about 1966 somewhere in there i've done a video on this before when i got it this pickup was in the wrong position uh, this pickup was actually up here somebody had moved it and they had tr drilled a hole here so i did a whole video restoring that back to its original position uh missing the pick guard but i do have a pick guard and i have some pick uh i do have the original pick guard but the problem is they they kind of cut into it when they moved this they had to cut a little piece off of it so i was going to remake a pick guard and finish the restoration on this but it's pretty much there um it's set up pretty well at the moment all the electronics do work so there there's that thing i will include the original pick guard if you want it and uh, like i said yeah i think i actually started cutting out a new pick guard for it so i'll include whatever whatever I, I had there too material wise so if you want to make that pick guard you can uh this one i'm i'm probably not going to sell this one quite yet i might do a video on this before i let it go it's a cool guitar oversized body i forget the model num number on that but it's a very cool uh, tysco very thin line full hollow body sounds very very cool when you plug it in uh, i've got this thing it's a first act this is like a very short scale i'm, I'm kind of loath to get rid of this one too just because i know i won't get much for it and i actually use this uh when I'm picking up my daughter sometimes in the car and I play it because it's uh, it's really short scale and the body's kind of short so it, it fits very easily in my lap when I'm in the car in the driver's side so uh, but there it is the first act what is that an ME 274 I will sell it if somebody wants it just hit me up uh, I got that Kent right there which is a that should be another Gaia Tone made product and it is um, I forget the exact model on this, but it's a three pickup version, so it's uh, it's one of the nicer ones. It looks like maybe one of the, yeah, one of the knobs have been replaced down there. You can see, missing the spring, missing the arm, missing the bridge. Um, it looks like maybe, maybe that pickup is not in there because I don't, I don't know, I don't see the uh pull pieces so i think that the internals of that pickup are gone so you'd have to do something with that um 
And you can actually replace the, the guts out of one of these pickups just like you would like a fender or something. You might even be able to squeeze a fender uh, coil in there. I don't, I don't know for sure. That's That was my goal is to try to, rest, if I was going to restore this, is to... Uh, you know, try to try to transplant something Frankenstein style into there and make that work. This is a very cool guitar. Let me pull this one off of here. This is a this is a Norma, uh, made by Sakai, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Three pickup. Very cool shape on that. I really dig it. Missing the arm. But everything else is pretty much there. Even the cover to the bridge is there, which you never see. Hardly. This is one of those that... It's a couple, three switches up there. Uh, but very fun guitars to play. This one has some stickers. Like a beginner or somebody owned it. But in very, very good shape. Very nice shape. Really, just kind of in the in the sort of shape you can just really never see um, Japanese guitars in. I've got this thing. I, I don't know. It's made by made by somebody or other. I can't really determine who that might be. Um, for I, I'm not sure. Last I heard, they went belly up or something. This is a um, let's see. That is a. Um, it's not a K craft. It's a uh, starts with an S. It'll come to me. I'll put a I'll put a note up there on the screen of what that is. It's restorable. The neck is uh, off of it at the moment. It's just kind of sitting in the in the dovetail. Actually, I removed the neck and was going to do a neck reset. You can see right, right there where I had to drill the holes to uh, steam the neck off. Uh, had a big crack here. So I mean that's a really that's a that's a pretty long shot project right there. It's in a, quite a state. That's a pretty long shot project right there too. You probably wouldn't be much interested in. I probably wouldn't even uh, want to ask anybody much for. These acoustics are kind of all the same way. Now this one is a this is a basket case that I just actually play because I like playing it. Um, you can't tune it uh, up to standard pitch and have the action be low enough to actually play the thing, but you can tune it real low, like to like you know a drop B or something and uh, just get all these low droning chords and stuff on it which I really like um, uh, that's something I made right there so I probably won't sell it until I actually finish it it's kind of in a state of not being finished then I've got this high deluxe bass which uh, is a serviceable guitar for sure it needs a setup but it's uh, that's a cool bass uh, I've got another base right there. It's a Japanese. That's actually a hollow body Japanese. And the neck on it, if I remember, was uh, basically banana shaped. So, I mean, I was going to have to uh, probably uh, take the fretboard off and, and slip, basically slip the fretboard. And what I mean by that is, um, uh, you know straighten the neck and then re-glue the fretboard in its proper position. I think what happened is somebody may have left it in a you know a warm environment and the thing and the neck just kind of went you know with the strings with too much tension on the strings and uh, sometimes though you can kind of you can warm those up and sl sort of slip the what I uh, well I, I just call it like slipping the uh, fretboard so might be able to do something like that. That's another hollow body base. You really don't see a whole lot of hollow body bases, and that's a really interesting one right there, a thin line hollow body. Kingston labeled on that one. This one would be Kawhi made. Uh, these are both Kingstons. This one would also uh, be a, pro oh, well, I don't know. It may not be labeled Kingston, but it would. it's definitely made by Kawhi, like this one. Got that K right there. That's the big Western uh, size uh, jumbo acoustic that's another big western size jumbo acoustic three in fact right there in a row of those very similar models uh, all three made by K in sort of different uh, eras I suppose this this one most likely being 
the oldest of the three. Got another base there on the end, which is a another hollow body. Kind of Hoffner-esque thing. I've got a couple of instruments up there, including a mandolin back there in the back. That mandolin right there is made by the same company that made, made this thing. That acoustic. Um, all kinds of little folk instruments. Every time I see these little things, I can't pass them up. And you do still, with some regularity, you will see this stuff in uh, flea markets and whatnot, antique stores, um, old ukuleles, and old banjo ukuleles. Um, you will see with some regularity, but it's those are actually getting uh, fewer and further between, between as well. Got a couple of uh, K-made mandolins back there. One of them was an airline. Sold at Montgomery Ward. I've got that... Uh, that one right there, which is a Roy Smek ukulele, made by Harmony. A couple more, uh, well, there's a ban another banjo ukulele, and then a banjo mandolin, banjolin, right back there. And that was another antique store purchase from somewhere. And, you know, like I said, again, you don't really see those quite as often as you once might have. Um, Seems like things have kind of dried up on that front. Got a couple of more ukuleles right there. That one has some interesting uh, painted figures on there, which I thought was kind of cool. And it's like, I don't know, it's like Peter Pan ukulele, I think is what that one is. Uh, yeah, Peter Pan. So kind of interesting. And let's see. All right, so back over into the closet. Um, I have some other stuff over there on the floor too. I could go through, I suppose, but let's uh, let's just go through the closet because since that was our initial plan, let's get this one out. Okay, what the hell is this? What is this? I think this is a Regal. I think that's what this is, is a Regal. Um, but you can see it sometimes, at one time, somebody had a, a tailpiece on there, um, I, which I don't think is original. I think uh, originally it would have, you know, just used that, that bridge right there. I'm not sure why they put the tailpiece on it. I can't remember the specifics of this. Um, but you can see there it did have a tailpiece at one point but just a very cool very cool guitar with a lot of character some cool inlays and that's real you know mother of pearl inlay that's not that's not cheap crap you know nice top spruce solid uh the back and sides are mahogany by the look of it Kind of a v-shaped neck on it um and this thing is old this is for sure this is for sure from the 20s or 30s um it's got a little inlay there on the headstock but i think that was done by someone later that's not you know that's obviously not something from the factory i think somebody added that maybe um but just a very nice fretboard i believe the fretboard is ebony there's a and it has some star inlays as well. There's a star inlay there. And there's a missing star inlay right there. Very thin frets, got a little bit of wear. Um, the nut, you know, the nut has the that really old appearance of probably being the original nut. And, uh, you know, that's definitely bone or, I doubt it's, ivory <laughs> but it's probably bone or antler or something like that um same on the saddle that's that's for sure a bone saddle i may have put that saddle on because uh, i mean I, I started doing work on this and i, I guess i realized that it was just going to need a neck reset i mean you can see it just the the neck 
just the neck dives at the wrong angle. It definitely needs a neck reset. So this was one of the projects that was kind of put on the back burner just simply for, for that reason. Uh, because, you know, it's just more work than I had time for. So. so if someone is up for a neck reset on a cool old, I'm guessing, 1920s parlor guitar. That's a Regal, probably. Uh, this could be a very, very cool very cool guitar. Let's see. Okay, what's this? The case has Series 10 written on it. I don't think it's a Series 10. Why is it not coming open? What the hell? Oh, there we go. Okay, well, this is definitely not the guitar that would have come in this case. <laughs> um, and I probably won't sell this guitar with this case because it's, it's not really a good fit anyway. Um, so I'll sell this guitar in this case separately. If somebody wants what looks like, what looks like a mid-70s uh, Japanese case, you know, maybe for something like an Ibanez. Um, there's that. And here's this. This is a uh, Tysco Del Rey. Very Fender-esque headstock there. Nice rosewood fretboard. See what I mean, though, about some of these old uh, Japanese guitars and the woods that they had available? I mean, you wouldn't find a, you wouldn't find a piece of rosewood of kind of that quality now on a guitar this cheap. You just wouldn't. I'm not sure what the body wood is. It's kind of a mahogany-ish uh, sort of body. Those pickups right there can sound really good, you know, and, but they vary. That's the thing. You, you never kind of know what you're going to get. Uh, it, it looks like the bridge is missing, but it's not, actually. It's uh, the tailpiece and bridge are all one piece. So that's how you, your strings actually, uh, you know, go underneath and come over the top. So it's an all-in-one thing, and then you can intonate it uh, with these. So it is, in, you know, able to be intonated, and then you can raise and lower it with these screws. So you can, you know, put it in whatever position it needs to be in for this thing to be right. And it's def definitely a serviceable guitar. You're missing one little uh, spacer right there, but actually those aren't even spacers anyway. These things just come right off. At least I think that's the case. On some of these, that's the case. No, those are actually spacers. So yeah, you would probably want to replace that, or just replace, or just replace all six with, uh, <clears throat> you know, something a little later. It does have the original uh, Tysco Del Rey logo. Those are actually a hot commodity. There was a guy for a while who was reproducing those. I'm not sure if he's still doing it or not. Um, I think he was forced to stop at one point because somebody uh, bought the Tysco name and made him stop. Neck is real straight on this, so this would actually be a, a very serviceable guitar, and uh, yeah, would be a very cool one. But you can see also the difference in sort of size of this model versus like the even the tulips. And let's see, what's this thing? Definitely a 60s case, probably Harmony, but we'll see what we have. A lot of these things, like I said, I, uh, I used to religiously, I used to religiously uh, label all this stuff uh, so that I could just at a glance see what, what was in what. But at some point along the line, I just kind of stopped doing that. I guess out of sheer laziness because I... Well, you know, I probably would buy stuff more than I, uh, you know, had time for to, to deal with it anyway. And this is just what happens. Here's a silver tone. Very much like the one kind of over there on the wall. You can kind of see it about halfway down there. But this one is not all warped up like that one is. Uh, it does suffer from the problem that a lot of harmony guitars suffer from and that is that um, 
Yeah, you can see there the, the neck is not in the greatest of shape, so you're going to have to reset the neck uh, to make this thing playable. I'm, I'm thinking, uh, yeah, it's, it's loose as it is right now, so you could probably just... Uh, you could probably just uh, remove this the the uh, the board extension right here. Just remove that from the body, and then it might just come right out, probably pretty easily. But yeah, there's your model number right there, three nineteen dot twelve ten, uh, or excuse me, one two one zero nine rather. But, you know, these are ladder brace guitars. Uh, you know, a lot of people will sort of thumb their noses at a guitar like that. But honestly, when you get one of these set up right, um, they can sound really good. They have just a really nice, tight, punchy, mid-rangey uh, sort of tone. And they have, you know, excellent sustain. Um, you know, when they're right, they're, they're really good. So anyway, there's that one. In desperate need of some work. Let's see what else we have here. Okay. Okay, here's this thing. Again, this looks like a mid 60s style case. I'm not exactly sure what's in it, but I think I've got a suspect of what I think is in it. And yep, look at this one. Now that's a nice guitar. That one I cannot give away. Some of these guitars I'm not going to be able to give away, guys. It's just the way it is. Uh, this is the three pickup version of the Harmony Rocket, and this one is in immaculate shape. Um, and I say immaculate, it might have a few little scratches or dings here or there, but overall, I mean, you can see how clean it is. I shouldn't have to. Shouldn't really have to tell you how clean it is, but it, the date on it looks like, uh, is that 64 or 66? I think it might be, might be 66. See the F66? That means the fall of 1966, made in the USA. Uh, it's an H59 model. I don't think anybody knows what those uh, preceding four numbers are. Some kind of batch number, maybe, for the factory. But excellent guitars, man. I, I really, really, really dig these. Both on necks. The tuners are always pretty good on these. Um, you know, you don't have a lot of slippage or anything on the tuners. They're serviceable. You know, you, of course, you'll, you'll probably have to uh, lubricate the tuners and all that stuff. But let's see. It's advertised in Downbeat. I thought, yeah, I think that's the original hang tag, actually, that this thing came with. I think this this hang tag came with this guitar. That's what the guy told me. Those cupcake knobs are all there and accounted for. Just these knobs alone, if you go to eBay and look at how much those knobs right there cost, yeah, those aren't cheap. And these, not to even mention the pickups, those are dearmond uh, single coil pickups. You've got... Selections where you can uh, select your number one, two, number three, or all pickups. So pretty cool. Excellent guitar. Um, like I said, I can't let this one go real cheap, but you know, if somebody wants to give me a reasonable offer, um, you're more than welcome to. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna get mad. <laughs> Just any no offer is gonna make me mad. So now I'll I'll probably just say no if it's too low. So. Um, Let's see what's in this gig bag. I'm not sure. Oh, here's an example of my tagging. It says uh, it's a 60s Fuji Gen. Uh, two pickups. Yeah, I used to be pretty fastidious about that. Okay. The battery, I think, is about to run out on this uh, camera, so...
Okay, so that's not real promising. I've got a pickup right there. I guess that means it's missing one of the pickups on the actual guitar, and I'll have to put it back on. All right. Oh, yeah. Well, there we go. There's your Fujigen. The, the, all the electronics are off of it at the moment. Okay, this will give you some insight, though, into how these things are put sort of put together. Um, the electronics, they, you know, they sort of run underneath here, and this butts up against. But look how they're um, elevating the pickups off of the, the body. They're actually using uh, this foam material to do that. They do have actually shielded wire. I mean, <laughs> so they were taking some precautions, you know, to try not to introduce noise. So that's good. I don't know if this pickup is dead, if it needs a rewind or what. I, honestly, I don't know. I do have another Fuji Gen uh, guitar, that red one over there actually, that has a couple of pickups in it that are probably good, I'm guessing. And you know, if you wanted, um, if you wanted a deal on the pair of these, I might do a deal on the pair. I think it's actually pretty much the same, same design, more or less. Except this one has the. Uh, the trim, there's, of course there's no arm, it does have the trim system there. And the roller bridge, whereas that one has a stationary bridge and a uh, stationary tailpiece. So, you know, once again, make me an offer, but also once again, just admire the quality of the, net, the uh, wood on that fretboard. I mean, look at just how dark and beautiful. I mean, that's got to be... I think that's Brazilian rosewood. It's got to be. And just really nice. The neck feels really good on this. I think that's why I bought it. Because I, I knew that this was definitely a serviceable guitar. But found out one of the pickups was dead. So I was going to have to send it off to get it rewound or rewind it myself. But yeah, there, there are, uh, are a few more of these. Um, like I said, if you guys are interested, let me know. My uh, my whole, my entire area is in such a terrible state right now. I've got stuff just kind of strewn everywhere, and just I've got to I got to clean all this up. But it doesn't help when you're dragging crap out of a out of a closet to try to get stuff cleaned. Okay, <laughs> that's an old K. Okay. Um. Okay. Now this was found in this dude's basement. Um, I have, I have the bridge for this. I also have the headstock and somebody of course had tried to repair the headstock in a wacky way with screws at one point, but I do ha actually have the headstock, but you can see there the, uh, the way in which they reinforce the necks. You see the big, uh, piece of, piece of iron or steel there. That is the reinforcement for the neck and the crack. Yeah, you know, the next the neck is basically busted and you're going to have to. Um, I think this piece has pretty well been re-glued on. Maybe, uh, maybe you can still pry that off and then re-glue it properly. But it's this piece right here. And probably what you would do is you can see it running along there, the crack. So you probably want to pry this piece back off or steam it back off or whatever and then glue it properly and then you know of course glue the neck properly the headstock which i do have i don't have it right here in this bag it's actually in my other room there um but beyond that you know you've got some you got some parts you've got you've got the original uh pick guard which appears to be looks like it maybe has a little hairline crack there Got a couple of the you know, cupcake knobs. You got a tailpiece. You got a very cool speed bump uh, style K uh, pickup there, which could could conceivably go into something else. You do have a uh, nice piece of rosewood fretboard there. You're missing some missing some binding. I mean, this would this would be a project 
But this would be a very rewarding project if you were able to uh, pull that off and get that headstock on. I, like Again, I do have the headstock. I'm not going to go dig it out right now, but I do have it. And I think I also have the original bridge too. So, so there's that one. 1950s, I would say, or late 40s uh, K-Electric. Okay, so that's going to do it for, for right now. I think uh, I've done just about as many of these as I can on this battery. And plus, I think this uh, is gonna, probably going to run into the 30-minute mark again, uh, like my last video. So I'll just cut it off right there, and we might go a little deeper in the next video. But Oh, and if you guys decide you want any of this stuff, uh, let me know. But also, uh, give me a timestamp. Uh, email me at this address. And uh, we can talk about, you know, what it is you want and what you want to pay for it and all that good stuff, start a negotiation or what have you, just like in my last video. And I will also put a link to the last video up here in a card somewhere if you want to check that out. Um, but yeah, definitely let me know in an email if you're interested in any of this stuff. Uh, and um, also give, provide me with a timestamp where you saw the guitar. That is, you know, the, the time of the video uh, runtime. So if you saw it at 24 minutes, 32 seconds, just just drop it in the email 24 minutes colon 32 that way i'll be able to go right to the spot where you're talking uh, where the, the guitar is that you're wanting i mean you can see we haven't really we're still working our way back we've got a long way to go i uh, count what one two four six eight ten twelve i mean there's there's at least a good you know who knows there's good 30 guitars in here still to go just in the closet I also have another area with some other guitars, so uh, we will probably um, pull some of those out. And uh, I've got a few better ones uh, in a different location, too. So we'll check those out uh, probably next time. So for now, we'll see you all later.